But um, boom. Welcome back to Big Board. Looking at MBT, the 4C MBG module. How's that for an acronym for you? The 4th Canadian Motorized something <coughs> battle group thingy thing. If I have to expand on what MBT is, I'm really sorry. It's a tank game. It's got main battle tanks in it, MBT. And I thought it's time to check in and see what has happened in the last, uh, since the last video. And it's been kind of cool and interesting. And of course, best laid plans of mice and men all go to uh, the poopy house once you start actually playing and actually get into contact with the enemy. So first things first, I, I think the original plan that we had for the Soviets was to push deep hard uh, right here on the village, cut into here and then attack. Uh, with uh, some Overwatch guys here, which has kind of sort of worked, but not very effectively. Uh, these enemy tow dismounted tow systems have proven to be, there's one here, uh, very effective. And so first company or second company, uh, Black 2, funnily enough, is uh, decided to advance to here with half of the tanks to establish an overwatch position that had better fields of fire would also allow us to control the action around the bridge because uh, we don't want that bridge blown. I don't really want to have to use my bridge laying equipment, he said, holding it in the shadows so you couldn't see this guy. All right. I don't want to really have to use them unless I need them. So we want those bridges intact. <clears throat> the, the NATO slash Canadian forces have made the mistake of, uh, you know, not having units adjacent or close to these bridges to blow them up. Basically, you, you put uh, small arms fire on them or, you know, an HE round into them and you have a chance of blowing them up. But it's pretty hard, and particularly at a distance. So first mistake. So we're trying to take advantage of that. So this advance to here was expensive. Uh, we have a, a damaged BTR. Excuse me, I've lost two tanks. 25% of my tank force, and, and I've lost two BTRs uh, in total. So two tanks got uh, taken out here. Now, uh, there's a brew up here, and I don't know, there's another, there was another marker here somewhere, I don't know where it is. Uh, and so as this, this advance really couldn't come in along this axis here until we got some smoke down, well, the commander couldn't roll well enough on you know the commander of red one company one couldn't roll well enough to get the smoke to actually be deployed which delayed our advance this is only a 20 turn scenario so now the soviets are under pressure due to the scenario time limit to try and press in here and i think what we're looking at if you want to put it into game terms and narrative or narrative terms you know there's a it's a high priority target it's got to happen this is a a force, this is a location that's been bypassed. It has supplies in it. There's a supply depot over here. So these guys have really got to, you know, kick some ass and, and accept losses and start <clears throat> being more aggressive. Well, they decided to do, to do that turn five. They had the, the company's BMPs were stacked, stacked up here. And first lot went to go across the uh, bridge here. Boom, took a, took, took a kill shot, lost the company and a squad. Uh, that automatically, I think, I don't know if you roll for suppression or whether you have to, where you become suppressed automatically. I forget what I did here, but uh, they're suppressed now. Either way, they're suppressed. Whether I rolled, it was automatic. They're suppressed. And so then the next lot uh, of chaps pass through and they are now uh, trying to race down to this location here. Uh, they're gonna buy, they might, they may choose to engage this uh, unit here since they're adjacent, or they might just continue on to their objective, getting into these woods somewhere 
where they can be undercover a little bit from the tow systems over on the, the left hand side of the map or over, over here and the artillery that uh, all the 81 millimeter mortars have been coming in. So uh, the only other interesting thing I think that's been going on is that the commander has got himself, ooh, there we go, the commander here somewhere, yeah, this guy, got himself out of position. He had to be in cover. I didn't want the, the, the command BTR to get taken out. So I had to get him into cover and then get him to a location. So I think we're gonna dismount him, get him to a location where he can cut, st cut. he can start uh, calling in observe fire against this uh, arrayed defense here, units in improved con uh, positions and things of that nature. You know, there's a tank over here, another tank here, and there are reinforcements coming for Canadians. So already I feel like, excuse me, I, I, at large lunch today, uh, I already feel like the Soviets are under the gun. And ideally, I think in, a, in, in the real world, if I use parentheses, parentheses for that, in the real world, I probably have another company of forces in reserve here and bring them on, uh, particularly uh, uh, another company of BTRs and, and infantry to reinforce this attack. Because I can see already we're suppressed here. We've got to do some recovery. These guys are uh, about to recover, but they bailed out of their tank, out of their BTR. So they've got to reload and then be ready to make the push. So they're almost out of the game at this point, uh, you know, effectively out of the game anyway. These tanks way back in the backfield are not really serving the purpose I wanted them to. This high, uh, these high trees here of blocking lines of sight. So this was a poor choice of Overwatch location initially. And I, I came across a couple of interesting things in the gameplay. I started looking into the toe and its effectiveness and its, uh, uh, I guess it's firing signature is what I would call it. It's a very subtle and difficult to spot uh, at a thousand meters or, or even more. Uh, you're probably not going to see the shot take off unless you're actively searching or looking. So the modifier for someone who has shot their weapon is pretty uh, aggressive. I think it's very appropriate for a main battle tank, but for a tow, uh, particularly these type of uh, ATGM, I'm not sure that a tank all the way back here is going to see the whoosh of the... There's no massive gout of flame or anything like that. If they're right at the edge of the light woods there. They fire their shot. They guide it in. Boom. Have their hit. I don't know that a couple of dudes on Overwatch here that are scanning the horizon are going to necessarily see that. Now, they might well see that this shot uh, you know, happened and these guys are under fire and then try and ascertain where it might have come from. So I, I'm not sure that, that applying the full penalty for firing uh, the same as you would for an MBT for these ATGM systems is equivalent, particularly if there's no gouts of flame and smoke and all this sort of business. These are basically a stationary tow system and a pretty small footprint, it's two or three guys, right? So. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm in two minds about uh, whether or not these guys get spotted or not. They, they, we ran it uh, that the rules, as the rules said, uh, these guys fired at them, uh, caused a, a suppression. So they had their uh, negative impact for, for their shot that they took. But I don't think it's reasonable or realistic. And having spoken to a number of people who have either fired them uh run M113s or run uh, anti-tank uh, formations, they, they would agree that uh, the sighting profile is pretty low on these types of units. So that's just a, a, a sidebar, a little bit of conversation. So Soviets are under pressure. I may have to reinforce the Soviets, give them another company, another, another company, another, uh, yes, another company, another company of uh, infantry to make this, uh, to press home the attack and or Extend the scenario five turns. And that's the cool thing about playing solo. We can do that shit. All right. 
Then I'll let you roll. Talk to you soon.